He is the sex appeal of the Ghostbusters team. He is the one, the only, Mr. Arnie Hudson. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Make some noise. Helping me out tonight are the Ghostbuster teams across Texas, being represented by San Antonio, Houston, Dallas-Fort Worth, Austin. How many times have you heard this song? All right, you guys, just for one minute, you gotta do the dance from the video, go for it. Ernie, you can judge them and you decide who's the best. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get a... Yeah, a couple of you guys are really, really awful. Awesome. <laughs> we had no idea what we were starting with that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I remember doing that down Broadway when we were doing the... Um, People always expect that I can dance, and Danny Aykroyd was actually doing it better than me. I thought, man, this is really bad. But, uh, yeah, hey guys, hi, I'm so glad you're all here. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to be here in Texas. Uh, I'm, um, I'm really, really impressed, and, and um, very happy that um, the Texas Ghostbusters chapters, there are chapters all over the world, but these guys represent a lot of Texas uh, from different groups. Uh, the um, what, what, Dallas um, Fort Worth mm -hmm. Ghostbusters, Austin Ghostbusters, San Antonio, San Antonio <laughs> Ghostbusters, um, Houston Ghostbusters. There are Ghostbuster chapters all over the world, and um, you know what they do is they do a lot of uh, in addition to having fun and doing whatever they do with those backpacks. I'm not sure. <laughs> but they do a lot of charity work and um, and they really work uh, to make a difference in the community. Um, for example, you guys, Dallas, you guys, what charity do you work with? Uh, work with Friars? Uh, Shiners. Friars, okay. And uh, you guys are? To be honest, I'm new. Texas Children's, um, and these guys are just here. Um, <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, so if you guys uh, want to, you know, uh, get involved, make a difference, um, I'm sure they're open to um, new members, and um, you know, a lot of people uh, always talk about what needs to be done, and I'm really impressed that these are guys who, um, you know, are out there trying to make a difference, and um, so thank you guys for being here. It's uh, great to... Um, yeah, great to. But I'm so happy that you guys are here. And uh, who hasn't seen the movie yet? Um, anyone? Great. Well, hopefully um, you guys will like it. I, I do a lot of. I made a lot of movies over the years, and uh, it's my job to say it's good. But uh, it's nice to really mean it this time. I think. I think it is a good, a good movie. And I think you'll enjoy it. So, but I understand there's some questions. Absolutely. We got a bunch of questions from the audience and uh, maybe some of these will give us more insight. First one is what made them decide to make another Ghostbuster movie? Do you have any insight on maybe what really pushed it forward or who was that voice? Well, what makes them decide to do another Ghostbuster movie? That's, that's really complicated. I think the answer would be money. <laughs> you know, um, and the fans, you guys have kept it alive for so long. I think even the studio is a little impressed. They've been trying to do one for a long time, getting uh, the guys together to agree to do it um, has been difficult. And uh, Jason Reitman, who was six years old when we did the first movie, he's in the second movie, the kid who asked or said he wanted He-Man in the very beginning movie. That's Jason. But um, he wrote the script and and pulled it together and, you know, and there's something about Jason, he's just a really sweet guy and you, 
you really want to to see him do well. So uh, you always bring your best. So I'm, I was very happy um, that. Uh, but yeah, I, it's um, you guys. The fans have been asking for it for a long time, and uh, the studio finally got it together. Okay, now this is bringing back some memories and some questions I have now, based on what you told us earlier about you not liking to dance so much. Uh, in Ghostbusters 2, where Jason was giving you guys a hard time, right? who came up with the dance moves that you and Dan were doing? Um, well, when you get two people who can't dance, you come up with something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, um, you know, Danny probably, Danny's really, he's a really creative guy and, um, yeah, so probably Danny. There you go, choreographer. Uh, is there an actor or an actress that you haven't worked with that you really want to? Uh, well, I just like working with good people. I haven't worked with Merle Street. We went to Yale together back in um, the very, very early 70s. Uh, Merle Street was there. Sigourney Weaver was also in our class. And uh, But I've uh, we've never worked together. I'd love to work with her before. Um, you know, we all get too old to um, stand up. But um, yeah, no, I'd love to work with Merle. And, but I just, I just like to work with good people. I've been very fortunate over the years to work with, um, um, I've worked with Betty Davis, who I was really, people that I grew up admiring, and uh, Laurence Olivier, and uh, just, I've had a great career working with some people. I do a thing called Grace and Frankie with Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, and uh, they're amazing. Sam Watterson, Martin Sheen, these are all veterans from, you know, um, yeah, so I've been very, very blessed, but but I'd love to work do something with Merle. I think we would all love to see that. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is your most memorable experience as an actor? Wow, the uh, most memorable experience. I did. A, it wasn't in movies. I did a play called The Great White Hope. I played a a guy who was the first um, black heavyweight champion of the world, Jack Johnson. Actually, I think he was from San Antonio. You, I think he, yeah, Jack was born. I think in San Antonio. Um, and this was at the uh, the turn of the century. I think he became champion in like uh, 1909. And he was just this extraordinary guy. And um, the play changed my life because he was bigger than life. And I never saw myself that way. So I shaved my head. This was back in 1975. And um, we did the play in Minneapolis and Kansas City and then ended up in uh, Los Angeles. And from that play, I, I got a lot of uh, film roles and I started working, but that was, um, yeah, that was life changing. I haven't found a role like that in film, but, but that was a role that, um, you know, I get asked to do a lot of things and people say, we, we want you to do a cameo or we, we don't need you that, to do that much. I don't, want, I don't need to do another movie. I want something that demands something. If you're going to work, you want to show up and, you know, so in the work. getting something that challenges you, that's uh, what, it's, um, what it's about. So, um, yeah. I hope that role comes to you very soon. Uh, how messy was it to clean the pink slime off after you fell in the river slime in Ghostbusters 2? Yeah, the slime was pretty messy. They just poured it over us, you know, because we've been swimming in the river of slime. Um, and we, that stuff we shot maybe three or four days until we're wearing it. And it soaks through the, the jumpsuit and it's just a mess. Um, but we had a scene where we come up out of the, the sewers, which is really a, a manhole on the streets of New York. And they put us in there, me, Danny, and Harold. And then they poured all this slime on top of us. And then we were to throw the top off and come out but the temperature dropped down to like 10 degrees below zero. So when we came up out of the hole, the slime froze. And it, it was like the coldest night in my life. It was <laughs> um, but yeah, the slime was, um, yeah, it was pretty bad. So you guys were frozen and then you had to scuffle with one another back and forth. Yeah, we had to do this fight and we had to, and they had no heaters, which I, I couldn't understand because I mean, how do we not have heaters here? <laughs> um, and nobody else was complaining. And I'm like, we're freezing here. So 
And then, they, honestly, the, uh, we came back the next night and they said they, there was a hair in the camera, so we had to do it all over again the second night. Um, but um, yeah, it was one of the, it was just so, so beyond stupid and painful. <laughs> We're so sorry. Yeah, you know, sometimes you kind of go, I, I, this is not really happening. It's, it's too stupid. Um, yeah, so. The things you have to go through to entertain, uh, you know, the likes of us, we, we yeah, appreciate no, all yeah. of it. I hope you know that. Well, nobody sees, the, you know, the, the horrible stuff. All you see is the good stuff that they, you know, all the dumb stuff. And there's a lot of dumb stuff, you know. <laughs> this is a, an interesting one. When did you consider yourself famous? Uh, I never considered myself famous. Um, I never really uh, got that. I mean, I have friends who are famous, who are so famous, they can't walk out in public, which is kind of awful. I mean, you know, you, you work hard to achieve something and then you're really afraid to go to the store. Um, I don't really, you know, I mean, people, people come up, but I don't think it's, um, you know, I, I remember I was in a, uh, with one of my grandkids and we went to, we went in a Payless shoe store. And there were people say, oh my God, it's Harry Hudson. Oh no, he wouldn't be in a Payless shoe store. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, people expect more of you, but no, I don't, I never, I, don't, I never really, um, what do you do with fame? You know, people go, you know, aren't you happy? And I'm like, not really, I mean, I don't know. You can't buy anything with it. Um, my wife and I, we had our 40th anniversary and this lady, who was very drunk, came over and sat at the table and told me how much she loved my work, and uh, and then she wouldn't leave, and she just <laughs> stayed there. And then we kind of signaled for the the maitre d to come over, and he tried to politely ask her to leave, and she said no, he would be nothing without me. We made him, and so she oh. just uh, oh no. So my wife and I we ended up having to leave the restaurant. Uh, so sometimes it gets a little weird, but. Um, but generally speaking, people are pretty nice. And, but uh, but in terms of being famous, I don't I don't quite I don't know what that is. I don't think. Um, yeah, I don't. You know, it's kind of weird sometimes. Uh, did you know that Ghostbusters was going to be a big hit almost uh, 40 years ago? And then um, for the crowd out there, can you just say th that's a big Twinkie? <laughs> well, that. Um, Okay, well, um, yeah, I think the only, the only one who knew that Ghostbusters was gonna really be something different was Danny Aykroyd, because Danny believes in all the paranormal stuff. He believes his grandfather, his great-grandfather, they were mediums and they were, he's got records of them seeing ghosts and, so Danny's really into it, he really believes it. Um, but most of us, you know, I knew the movie would be, come out uh, number one, but I think the surprise is that it's lasted for all these years. Um, I don't think anybody could have um, uh, expected that because that's a big Twinkie. <laughs> yes! You did it! Okay, earlier you mentioned uh, you didn't take a lot from the Ghostbusters films, but if you had a choice, what would you like to take? You go back. What would you um, like to take? You know, if I had a choice, I would have uh, taken Bill Murray's paycheck. <laughs> now that's a big twink. That's a great answer. Uh, did you think there would ever be another Ghostbusters movie after your, you know, Ghostbusters 2? Well, after, no, because it just, it seemed like it was taken forever. And uh, they announced it, and then it wasn't happening, and Billy didn't want to do it, and so and I don't think they want to do it without Bill. And so when Paul Faye came along, and they were going to do something different, it was like going to be all ladies Ghostbusters. Uh, but Paul didn't want to tie it into the original Ghostbusters, which made it kind of in a different universe. And when that didn't do as well as they wanted, I thought it was pretty much over. We never see one. So, um, and of course, when we did the video game, we thought, a lot of people thought that was the third movie. Um, sure. And, uh, and it was fun doing, but I didn't think we'd uh, get around to making it. I thought it was pretty much over in terms of, you know, we had those movies that were great, let's move on. Uh, and then this one came up, and it's nice. But I think you always have to, um, 
you know, I don't know if there'll be, I'm sure there'll be another Ghostbuster movie, whether any of us will be involved with it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see, but. Would anybody like Ernie um, Hudson to be involved in another Ghostbusters yeah. movie? Yeah, well, there you go. Um, I mean, I'd love to be if I'm asked, and if I'm paid well, I, you know, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm just happy that we have these, and I'm so happy that they came out one that I think you guys will, that was, that was worthy of. And I think this one, I think this one is. You know, earlier you just mentioned that uh, there was a video game that a lot of fans consider to be part three. Would you ever think about maybe doing another video game, maybe in the near future? Yeah, in fact, when I go back to California, in fact, I just got an email um, because yeah, we're doing another video game. And so they're, uh, they're scheduling it now to do the recording. And I'm not sure who's going to do it. I know me and Danny, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if Billy will do anything on it, but um, so there, there'll be another video game. They've been sending me prototypes of the character to get the image right, um, which they seem to have a hard time somehow creating my image. It's so weird to me that they can get Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis to look exactly like they look, but I end up looking like Eddie Murphy or somebody. <laughs> Why that's so hard, really? You're a god, that's uh, why. Yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so we'll be doing it. Um, when they'll bring it out, I don't know, but definitely it's happening. Is there anything you're allowed, because I don't want to get you in any trouble, to tell us about the game? Does it take place in any specific time? Does it, uh, you know, is it tied to any movies in particular? I have no idea. I, honestly, I, um, with recordings, I just go in and I just, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm too old to, to worry about stuff. So I just yeah, that's true. do what I do and, um, and yeah, so I have no idea what, it, what it'll be. I, I, I don't know. We can't wait though, we can't wait. Yeah, it should be good. I mean, I'm sure it'll be good. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, what was your favorite part in uh, any Ghostbusters movie? Either that you were in or that was somebody else was in? There was another Ghostbusters movie that I wasn't in. <laughs> any any part of the film, I mean, part of any movie. scene oh, okay. that you Holy were man, it was another Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> There's a few fan ones that tried really hard, yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. I, I always like to scene with Bill Murray uh, in the beginning of the movie when he's doing the little test. He's actually hitting on the girl, and uh, that, that's always been funny to me. But uh, I love the scene with the, the library. It's kind of one of my favorite scenes. And I love working on the scene with Danny in the car when we're talking about the end of the world and the dead rising from the grave. Uh, but there's a lot of, I, I just, you know, it's, it's a really, just a wonderful little movie in its, in its own right. Uh, somebody wants to know how heavy were the proton packs and if you can maybe also elaborate on how much you liked wearing them or how much you disliked wearing them. Well, the, um, the proton packs were made out of this serious, they were made out of metal. So uh, the original packs, and they weighed about 60 pounds, which, and they cut into your hip. Um, and so it was, um, I'm sorry, was it something I said? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, um, so they were pretty heavy. But we had a rubber pack that when we were doing the action stuff that we would use, but you couldn't shoot those close up because people would tell. But um, yeah, they were they were cumbersome and, and, and a little difficult. And impossible to put on. You can't put those things on by yourself. You need somebody to help you. You know, you can't like grab a pack and throw it on. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Not real practical, but uh, yeah. So you and I actually had a conversation about Ghostbusters Afterlife before you had agreed to sign on and the one thing that you always uh the one thing you said that i always remembered was you wanted your role in afterlife to make sense yeah. and you said that a couple of times you said i want it to make sense you wouldn't do the project unless you felt like the story was good enough or just right for winston to return uh, even though you were already in it you know what was the thing that made you decide to to join the movie yeah, well, first off, the fact that it was happening and get to to get together with Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, seeing the guys in their jumpsuits and seeing that I was the only one who could still fit in mine. Really, <laughs> <laughs> they really needed you. 
this way. But um, so it was just, it was very spiritual seeing Sigourney Weaver and Annie Potts. Um, but when I did the, the first movie and I would go around to schools and um, I didn't, you know, uh, the, the little kids, they loved to play Ghostbusters. And the teachers would say that uh, they didn't fight each other when they played Ghostbusters because they always were fighting the invisible ghosts. But then uh, the mutant ninja turtles came out and they were like hitting each other with sticks and stuff. But anyway, so I would go around to schools and make the monorail Ghostbusters, but the kids would always ask me, where does Winston go? Which made no sense to me. But then I realized that they didn't know anything about Winston. He was just there. You know, we didn't know if he had a family. What did, did he go? Where, where he just shows up. And so when this new movie came, Jason um, gave um, some backstory and, and made the character um, more rounded and, and real. And I, I appreciate that because uh, that was always lacking to me. I mean, with Danny Aykroyd, we knew he had the bookstore um, or his shop. Bill Murray was this television, whatever. Harold had his lab, but Winston, we never knew. So, so that was great. This movie, uh, wait till the end of the credits, and it has a lot of insight to Winston and what he's been up to. Next question is interesting, and I think I know the answer. Uh, somebody wants to know who's the leader of the Ghostbusters? Who's I mean, Who's the leader of the Ghostbusters? I mean. Um, well, you know, um, who's the leader of the Ghostbusters? I, you know, I don't know. I, I suppose when we did the movie, I would have said that um, Bill Murray would have been the leader because he was just sort of, you know, he would have been the leader. But now that we're older, definitely Winston is the leader. Uh, Absolutely. That definitely Winston <laughs> is the leader, you know. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I asked you uh, yesterday, we had a, a brief discussion. Uh, there, there's so many new elements in this movie to appreciate, uh, to, to enjoy. Um, what is some of the, maybe not spoiling anything big or major, what are some of the cooler either effects or the, uh, the technology that you really liked in the new movie? Yeah, there's some new stuff in, you know, and of course technology has advanced so much since 1984 that you'll see in the movie. And um, there's some additions to the, uh, to the, uh, the Ectomobile that uh, I think are pretty cool. And um, so there's a lot of uh, neat uh, technology that's, um, that's in the film that, that we couldn't have done back in 1984. Yeah, so it's um, it's fun. You know, what, what was it like visiting the set? You guys must have been like the Beatles, like coming on to the set, right? Uh, well, it, it felt like, um, you mean the real Beatles? Like the, the <laughs> <laughs> those jumpsuits, yeah, we felt like the Beatles, really. But um, yeah, it felt, because I look, once again, it was like getting together again. I mean, I would run into the guys, I do run into the guys from time to time separately but uh to get everybody back together that was kind of and the the new cast really enjoyed being a part of it and uh, were very welcoming to us uh, older old ghostbusters you know, so. yeah. uh, who were you most impressed with from the new movie we had all these new uh young actors and actresses who are you most impressed with i mean everybody mckenna grace is uh she sings a song at the end of the movie uh, which I was really impressed. I didn't know it was her singing, but uh, she's really a very talented. And Paul Rudd is the sexiest man in the universe. Uh, I had no idea. It's like, uh, it's like the, um, but the cast is great. It's, it's a great cast. Uh, the, the kid who plays um, podcast, podcast. He's he's. I think it's the first acting role he's done, and he's he's wonderful. So um, yeah, it's, it's a great new cast, and I think you'll you'll like their work. They're very good. Ernie, we want to thank you for taking this time to answer all of these uh, fantastic questions. Thank you to the uh, Ghostbusters groups from Texas for helping me out. Yeah. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Mr. Right. Ernie Hudson. You know, the, uh, thank you guys so much. I really, um, I really appreciate you being here. Like I said, it's great being here. And thank you for all the love you guys have shown the Ghostbusters over all the years. You guys are the Ghostbusters. And um, yeah, we really just, just really appreciate you guys. I was talking to Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd about it in New York at the premiere and we just really just appreciate the fact that you guys have embraced this movie and just made it what it is so so thank you all uh, thank you guys